The second test I want to uh, talk about, this one is more like the GUnit's automated counterpart for console tester number one. Okay, that's what I want to do. Before I go through some logic over here, let's do some uh, syntactical comparison, right? This is counter test one, which we did earlier. This is the new one. I simply say test decrements from the minimum value, which means we're going to expect some value to small exception to be thrown. Okay. I want you to see the following correspondence over here. You can see we have to initialize some counter over here in both cases, right? And then you can see in this case, when we try to print out the initial value, which uh, expecting to be zero uh, output to the console, in the case of JUnit test, we say assert equals, and then make sure they are actually equal to the minimum value over here. Okay, that's the uh, first correspondence I want you to see, the first one, okay? What about the try and catch block? They are pretty much similar. So you can see we got try and also catch over here. And we got try and also we got catch. And we are really calling the same method C the decrements and C the decrements, right? But now the different the logic is really identical. It's just that when we actually notice any success or failure uh in uh in the console tester, we think we can only print out something to the uh something to the console but in the case of JUnit, you can use the built-in assertions to uh, for the automation that's really the key okay let's go on a little bit further to com complete it in the case of success which means the exception was really uh thrown in that case remember to really pass a test what's the most trivial way you simply do nothing that's why the green part corresponds to the success in the console tester over here that's about success what about failure for failure let me use uh, maybe blue. For failure, you can see in the console test that we explained before, you will simply put a uh, print out error message to the console. But now in this case, we can uh, we can say fail, which will fail the assertion. Okay, just remind you once more, doing nothing is the most trivial way. Most trivial way for passing a test. But if we can reach uh, to this point, we know that the test should really pass because the expected exception was really thrown. And then in this case, it will just fail, right? All right, so hopefully you can see the correspondence, so I don't need to repeat uh, the logic uh, to you. But I do want to illustrate very quickly on the Eclipse to really make sure you can also reproduce the experiment yourself. Let me now go back to Eclipse you can see under the same project here, under tests, you will see test counter, okay? This is the one I illustrated before, uh, just, uh, oh, sorry, not this one. The first one is about the test, the default test, and the second one is test decrements from minimum value. That's the one I want to look at together with you, okay? Let me now just put the uh, breakpoint over here. Again, let me now go to the counter, which is under model or implementation, right? We'll talk about decrement. Let's make sure, okay, currently this implementation is correct. Let's go for the correct uh, correct workflow, uh, the correct execution flow. If I go for that, if I simply launch the, uh, oh, let's go to test counter. And then we're gonna launch the test counter as unit test. And then we're gonna switch to debug perspective. Okay, so we're gonna say, go over, go over. So this assertion should really pass because currently you can see C the value is simply zero. That one's okay. And when we say C the decrements, right? Let's now step into it. If I step into C the decrements, currently the value is actually equal to zero. Zero equals equals the minimum value. Zero is going to be true. So which means if I say step over, we're going to throw this value to small exception as expected. That's correct behavior. And then if I say step over again, we're going to catch that value to small exception. And now we know that some uh, things that we expect to happen already happen. So we simply do nothing. And Eclipse doesn't really show you the, the, the arrow uh, 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 right uh, to the left of do nothing. You just pap, uh, you simply just execute it so quickly. All right, so this is the case where there's nothing wrong. There's not no assertion failure and also no unexpected exception. So the test case should pass. All right, that's the first one. What about the second one? Let me now go back to the counter, and then for the illustration, I'm going to make it a ROM implementation, right? How about smaller than? 
meaning that you will only throw the exception when the value is strictly less than the minimum value, for example, minus one, but that might be too late. Let me now, I already fixed that, right? It's wrong implementation now. Let me go back to the same uh, JUnit test over here. And now let me launch the debugger once more. And then let me step over over here. That assertion will be okay. But now if I step into, right? You can see this the value is actually zero. Minimum value is also zero. Zero less than zero will be false. Meaning that we are not going to execute uh, this throw statement here. So if I say step over, I'm gonna say value minus equal one. And that one is going to mistakenly uh, decrement the value for the counter into minus one. You, you can also double check that the value has become minus one here. So that's actually wrong. So now if I go step over again, so because no exception has been thrown, meaning that the flow was not disrupted. So we'll go to the next line. And this one is gonna fail the test case because we know that reaching this line means that C that decrement did not throw that exception as, expect, uh, as expected. When you study this uh, test, you can also read over the comments I surround them uh, in the code. So that will also give you some more information. If I say step over, okay, we fail this test case, right? You can say stop and then go back to the J units. You will see that, uh, okay. Anyway, so if I rerun the test, you will see we actually fell the very first one exactly over here, okay? And let me just uh, put this uh, implementation back to the correct one, but you see the idea, okay? Hopefully you're okay for the very first one over here. And let's now go for the second one, which will correspond to console tester two, in which case we are trying to increment when value already reaches its maximum. Okay, and I want you to also click on this link to actually see the console tester, which I already did the comparison together with you. But I want you to look at that also yourself, right? Again, compare the design logic for the two tests, either console or JUnit, are exactly identical. The only difference is rather than printing out to the console for manual inspection by our eyes, we can simply put it into assertions over here for automated running for regression testing. All right, that's a very important remark. I want you to, uh, I want to pick, uh, keep repeating to you. Let's now take a look at the second test. Okay, uh, again, automation. So this is just the corresponding uh, usage pattern for the uh, iterative uh, console tester, right? Okay, what about the second one? The second one, I call that test increment from maximum value. So that, that really corresponds to console test, uh, console counter, counter tester number two, okay? Let's now take a look. Very similar idea. However, I want to point out one thing to you, which will be also uh, will also be asked to you as an exercise. Okay, if you recall very quickly, this is a nested try and catch. We got the outer catch, try and catch. We got the inner try and catch, and then we actually got also this console tester, uh, counter tester number two, which we explained in detail earlier. And now I'm defining this test increment from maximum value. Now I want you to remember. Remember this particular exercise we did? Let me show to you. This uh, exercise over here, right? In which case, I, I'm still having a console tester, but the alternative simply kind of a, uh, uh, remove, kind of move the inner try and catch into a try and catch block after the try and catch, so we don't have the nested try and catch. Right, that's the exercise we did earlier. And we said that in the case of console tester, uh, printing out to the console application, this would not work appropriately because even after the error has been printed over here, we will still continue to execute this part for the manipulation, manipulation for the counter, which is not appropriate, right? However, I claim that we can simply reuse that structure over there. And then this is what we do, right? So we still do try and catch and try and catch. So now I'm talking about JUnit test. Try and catch, try and catch. And the way I do that is by doing this. You can see here, this is one assertion fell, meaning that if, so this is saying, if either this or this or this, if either one of these actually, uh, actually uh, throw some value too large exception over here, value to large exception. In that case, that will be unexpected. If any one of these will actually happen, so that means I should really fail, right? And now here's the thing. 
as soon as you say fail a particular uh fail uh, if you as soon as you put the fail assertion at this point that means the whole test case is going to terminate over here remember i also said earlier for the gunit test method as soon as the very first assertion failed the rest are not going to be uh, checked anymore just the first one can cause the entire test method to really uh uh to be uh terminated okay so here is really important over here to say that if this assertion is executed the entire test method well terminates and fails Okay, the important part here is about terminates over here. Okay, it's going to terminates, which is a different behavior from the uh, uh, console tester counterpart. Okay, let's say if none of them actually will, let's say the other way, if none of them will actually throw that uh, exception, in that case, we are just going to make sure the counter value will reach its maximum. And then what we will do is we're going to actually try to do a fourth increments over here. And that one there, we do expect the exception to be thrown. In that case, if it's really thrown and break uh, and disrupt the uh, execution flow, so that will be do nothing to actually pass the test. So this is where the test can pass by doing nothing. On the other hand, if we actually say if somehow increment was not really implemented correctly, and then it actually did not throw that particular value to large exception. That means we'll go to over here alternatively, and then that one should really fail, right? So this will actually be a failure because the value to large exception not thrown as expected. The logic of this uh, test method here is very similar as before, but I think I want you to really see the uh, the detail line by line uh, reasoning. Okay. Recap: In the case of console tester, we must use nested try and catch. We must. Otherwise, you can you can run into the situation where even if an error actually occur, you uh, even if an error actually occur, you still cannot go to you can still go to the uh, try and catch. Uh, that will actually uh, uh, further manipulate the objects, right? That's in the alternative version. On the other hand, in the case of uh, the JUnit test, you don't necessarily have to do nested try and catch. At least uh, in general, you can do much uh, much fewer uh, try and, uh, nested try and catch. You can simply go for one, follow the other, because as soon as any fail that actually occurred uh, along the way, it's going to cause the entire method to fail right away. Okay, that's the, the main thing I want to explain to you. All right, let's now take a look. You should really study the more details about this test method, but I think already explained each line together with you. Let's now try to run some Eclipse quickly. And before that, uh, you can see up just uh, some uh, execution flow to read over. I'll let you do it, okay? But there are two things I want you to uh, study by yourself when you do the slides to review. One is you want to go to the corresponding console test two, which has uh, the equivalent uh, console tested to, which is which has the nested uh, try and catch. That one's the working version, but it must be nested in the case of console application. On the other hand, I want you to go back to that particular exercise and see the alternative, which will show to you if you don't really nest the try and catch block for the console application, you're going to run into some logical error, right? Hopefully, it's many details over here to cover, but I hope it's clear to you what you have to review. Let me know. Go back to Eclipse over here. Let's now take a look. Let me uh, go back to the counter, and the one we want to play with will be the increments, right? Why don't we just do the equals equals first? So that'd be the correct implementation. And don't forget, I gotta go back to Java perspective. Okay, so now we got a correct version of increments. Let me just close this and go back to test counter. Let me remove the previous breakpoint. And the one, the one I want to show to you is the test increments from maximum value. Let me just put it here, okay? And let's uh, let for uh, run number one, we want to see the correct implementation. And let me launch the debugger. 
and I switch to Java perspective, uh, switch to the debug perspective, okay, which I'm in right now. Let's see. So at the moment, uh, it's completely uh, correct implementation. So these three increments will simply be okay. Uh, with will simply not throw any unexpected value to large exception. So this catch block will never be executed again. This uh, flow error over here re is referring to the end of the try block, right? So the catch block here will be completely bypassed. Okay, I'll do that. Okay, and then what about assert equals? Let me just expand this a little bit so you can see. And the assert equals, you can see expected value over here is, uh, this is just another version I'm using. So you can also put some uh, string message to really indicate what uh, the purpose it is for this uh, particular uh, assert equals. It's just an additional uh, thing to show to you. Expected value is maximum, which is three. C dot get value, if you move your mouse over, is actually uh, three. You can see three here, right? So if I step over the assertion pass, and now C dot increments over here, since it's correct implementation, is going to actually uh, throw that exception uh, as expected. So if I say step over, I'm going to bypass the rest of the try block and go to the catch block immediately. But since it's do nothing, I'll just buy, uh, I'll just uh, execute it so quickly. I'll go to the end of the method. Okay, I'm now here. Nothing like an assertion failure or unexpected exception has occurred, so the test will be considered as a pass. All right. Let's say step over. Okay, it simply passed. Right. I just don't need to step into the uh, the class anymore. That's good. All right. So if I just run the uh, G unit test without any uh, any pausing, in that case, I got a green bar. Now I want to go back to the counter class and uh, increment method rather than equals equals. Let me just, oh, of course, we got two ways to really uh, make the uh, implementation incorrect as we said before. What about I just try this one where it's larger than, meaning that no, uh, no value to large exception will be thrown prematurely for the first three increments. But for the final increments, I wouldn't actually throw the value to large exception as expected, right? Let's try. Okay, it's been modified already. You can try another one yourself. Okay, if I say launch the debugger, okay, counter here, and then step over, step over, step over, step over, right? None of them will actually uh, throw the exception prematurely. However, when I get to this one over here, right? Let's now step into. If I step into over here, this style value is actually at the moment three larger than three. Three larger than three will be false, meaning that we meaning that we are not going to throw the exception as expected. If I say step over, now I'm actually going to increment the value mistakenly. If I say step over, you can see the value uh, for a counter is now becoming four, which is totally unacceptable, right? If I say step over, you can see because no exception has been thrown, so that means we can we can flow. Um, there's that there's the normal flow of execution, we can flow from this line over here into this line, which will fail the test case immediately, which is uh, uh, the which matches the design for the logic for this test. If I say step over, now we fail the test, right? Stop here. And now if I say run the test without hesitation, you can see this is the test uh, that actually showed to you, you're really expecting that exception to be thrown, but it was not thrown. It's really illustrated value for a test case. When your implementation is incorrect, it can tell you that, no, you have done something wrong. You gotta fix it, all right? Okay, so that's about the second test case. I want to remind you. Uh, let's now go to uh, another one. Okay, let's see this. Okay, so that's uh, just corresponding to the, uh, the iterative cons uh, console tester about automation. Let's now do some exercise together.